Hey, hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking at an army that we've looked at before, but I wanted to do it in a different way. Today we'll be looking at how to start the British, but this time it's for the Peninsula War. And it turns out that this has become the Perry edition. Don't worry, I'll <laughs> we'll talk about that when we get there. Don't forget, I've already done one on the British, and that is how to collect the British for the Waterloo campaign, the 100 days. And that one is based on starting off with the Waterloo starter set from Warlord Games. This one isn't. That said, I want to say right at the beginning, basically what I'm going to recommend here, you can also use to build a 100 days campaign. It's almost exactly the same. There's one box which you'd need to swap out, and one which you, you could switch out if you wanted to. But we'll get to that when we get to that. So first off, one of the things that I absolutely love about the Peninsula War is that the battles there are pretty small, certainly small by continental European standards. Uh, I mean, you know, they're not tiny, don't get me wrong, but it does mean that over a long enough time, or perhaps with a few people in the club, it's absolutely possible to collect the entire British army and a French army to oppose them. Maybe not at Vittoria, or perhaps even Talavera, but some of the smaller actions, say Salamanca, Fuentes de Honoro, Places like that, I think it's it's very, very doable to collect the whole army. But maybe that's just a bit of a crazy pipe dream that I've got from my obsession with collecting the entire Bavarian army. So don't, don't hold me on to that one. Now, if you've not seen one of these videos before, even if you have, it's been a while since we've done one. I'm just going to quickly go over the rules. And the rules are the same as always. We've got £200 to spend, and it's divided into two £100 chunks. The first £100 goes on forming the core of the army, so that's the things that we're going to need to build the army around. And that's, you know, that's effectively month one. That's as if, you know, it comes out of our first month's pay packet. And then we've got the second month after that, and that's when we can have the fun things and add the flavour to the, the army, to the troops that we've bought in the first month. I always talk about it being out of two pay packets, but for some of our younger viewers, maybe, it could be perhaps a birthday money and a Christmas money. Basically, it's, it's two lots of money. The first one's there to get you get you started, get you going, and the second one is to add the fun stuff. Now, we normally assume in these videos that the person who is going to be buying the army isn't brand new to Wargaming. They've probably played 40k or War Machine or Malifaux Infinity, something like Bolt Action, something like that before. So I'm not going to include things like paints, glues, knives, clippers. I'm not going to include any of those in the purchasing. However, I am going to do a video on getting started Napoleonic tools, effectively. <laughs> That's not saying that you get excited as a tool, I hate to do that. But uh, no, it's going to be sort of what things should you look out for if you are starting from scratch. Maybe you used to wargame and you've got rid of all your stuff or it's still in your parents' attic and you've moved out or whatever it is. And, you know, you need to start again from scratch. So that's something that I'm going to be doing in the future. As it stands at the moment, I'm going to assume that you've got all your paints and glues and stuff like that. I also won't be including postage. Now, all of these prices are going to be the RRP from the manufacturer's website. If there's deals, then I'm going to recommend the deals. Although, if there's, you know, sometimes the deals that you get, they're actually not that good. You can probably pick them up cheaper from a third-party company. Something like The Outpost, as you know, I'm an affiliate with The Outpost, there's a link to them in the description down below. But, yeah, so I'm not including um, postage, I'm not including tools, but I am also going with the RRP. Now, there's a lot of places out there you can get the money off the RRP. I would recommend that you definitely check those out. The Outpost being my uh, my first choice, but those are the ones out there as well. Element Games is particularly good. Oh, sorry, no, 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 Element Games is alright. Firestorm Games is the one I was thinking of. They're very good. They've particularly got quite a lot of Victrix there as well. Uh, Wayland Games, if you want to roll the dice and <laughs> risk that one, is another one. So there are options out there. My choice is the Outpost, but I just want to let people know that there are other ones available. Now, I should perhaps be a little more specific. I'm going to do the 3rd Division as they were at the Battle of Salamanca. Now, some of you will have seen on the channel that we've actually done a refight of the 3rd Division at the Battle of Salamanca, so I recommend you go and check that out. But I've just popped up on the screen here, hopefully, if I remember to put it up, the, uh, the Order of Battle at Salamanca. And as you can see, the division is made up of three brigades of infantry. We've got the 1st Brigade under... 
Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Wallace, he had the 45th foot, the 74th foot, the 88th, and three companies of the 5th Battalion, the 60th foot. We get to those guys in a bit. The second brigade is of Lieutenant Colonel Campbell. Now, he had two battalions of the 5th foot, uh, the 2nd Battalion, the 83rd of foot, and the 94th of foot. And then we had your boy, Manly Power. <laughs> I love Manly Power. And he's uh, Portuguese 8th Brigade, consisted of the 9th and 21st line, and the 12th Cazadores. Now, I often get, uh, get corrected on the pronunciation of the Cazadores. Cazadores. I'm not entirely sure how it's pronounced. So apologies to Portuguese speakers out there. But uh, of all the <laughs> of all the European languages, that's probably the worst one for me. Maybe Polish is probably worse. But uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's pretty bad. And if you've heard many of my other videos, <laughs> you know that it's starting from a very low base. But basically, we can see it breaks down into seven infantry battalions. Additionally, there's the two Portuguese battalions and one light infantry uh, unit as well. Now, one thing that I didn't mention when I was going through the rules, and I always forget this one is the sizes of units. Now, we're looking here at a standard infantry battalion being made up of 24 figures, and a standard cavalry regiment is going to be 8 figures in this one. So, we've gone for the slightly smaller size units in this one, but remember, this is a starter army. We can always add to them later, and it just lets us get... So, it gets our units on the table and just gets us underway with gaming the Napoleonic period. Now this is where we're going to make the first of our major decisions about this, and that is what manufacturer shall we plumb for? Now because we want to collect quite a lot of figures, then that we're really looking at plastics, and there are three companies out there that currently make plastic line infantry for the British. That's Victrix, Perry, and Warlord Games. I'll be honest, there was some toing and froing in my mind about which way to go on this one. Uh, my British are actually Victrix, but they were, they wouldn't be the ones that I'd recommend. So it came down to either the Perrys or Warlord, and I eventually plumbed for the Perrys route. Now, you can mix and match, don't get me wrong, but I'm the, when we go through what I'm recommending that you buy, it's fairly rigid. There's not a huge amount of availability to mix and match, and you'll see why in a second. But that's what I would go with. I would go down the Perry route. If you prefer the Warlord Games ones, or you prefer Victrix... Or you want to go all metal and you want to get something like front rank, absolutely go large. But uh, I'm going to recommend that we stick with the Perrys. It's a little bit boring, it's a little bit safe, but for my money, they are the best on the market and they also give you the best value. So when you've got the the highest quality and the lowest price, then you're on an absolute winner there, aren't you? So we're going to jump onto the Perrys website and we are going to look at the British Brigade deal. Now, these are a little bit difficult to find. You need to look for Army deals, and then you go to the submenu Napoleonics, and then you scroll down to the British. And that gives you four boxes of infantry, a pack of three mounted colonels, and a cannon for the princely sum of £83. Now, don't get me wrong, that is a wedge of our first £100, but that is a ton of infantry. And that's because the Perrys... They sell their infantry in boxes of 36. Now, don't worry if you think that you're going to end up getting sent the wrong boxes, because the Perrys only actually do one box of British, and you get the parts to make Peninsula, War, or 100 Days Campaign out of that one box. So, even better, if they arrive and they look a bit waterloo on the cover, don't worry that you've been sent the right boxes. In addition to the 36 line infantrymen that you get in the box, you also get, and this is going to be crucial, you get six riflemen as well. So that's a really nice bonus. That's going to save us some money down the road. When when we're looking at spending £200 on a full Napoleonic army, it, it's, I mean, you get a lot more than you would at Games Workshop, but it's still useful trying to squeeze every single one of those pennies. Actually, don't think about it. I don't think they do come with six. I think they come with four, four per box. So we've got four boxes, so we've got 16 all together. So sorry about that, that's a, a filthy lie of mine. We've uh, You get four riflemen per box, so we've got 16 out of our four boxes. And these we're going to paint up as regular riflemen, but instead of having the black facings of the Black Mafia, these guys are going to have the red facings because they are the 60th of foot, the Royal American Rifles. So those are our skirmishers. We saw in the order of battle there were three companies of those. So we've got 16 figures, so we can either make companies of five figures or maybe four figures and have a, have a couple spare, something like that. But that'll give us plenty of the skirmishes 
to have the three companies, the small, well, tiny units they would be, of the 60th Infantry, the 60th Rifles. Now, I said in, in the, well, I didn't say it in the introduction because I forgot, so, <laughs> so I said it at the start of this uh, section. Um, we are going to be using units of 24 figures. So this is where we're going to have to fire up the old maths machine and work out how many units we can get out of the uh, the brigade deal box set. Bo box set deal. You, you know what I mean. Out of the brigade deal. That's what I'm looking for. Now, we've got four command groups in this set, so we can put aside four battalions of 24 figures. So that's 96 of the original 144 that we started with and now accounted for. So that leaves us with 48 figures remaining. Now we don't have any command groups for these guys, so we're going to go also onto the Perry's website and we're going to buy some command groups for these. Now these are under the plastic accessories part of the website. Again, it's a little bit confusing, a little bit difficult to find, but you could get them on there and they come out at £5 a sprue. And we're going to order three of these bad boys, so that's going to cost us another fifteen pounds. The reason we're going to add, uh, we're going to have three, is because that adds an extra eighteen figures onto our forty-eight total, giving us sixty-four, which we can divide by twenty-four to give us two more battalions of twenty-four figures, and we've got eighteen left over, so we can make a small battalion out of that. So out of those four boxes and three command groups. We've now spent uh, £98, but that is all of the British infantry that we need for our division. So that's, I mean, that's an incredible start to the army. One of those units is going to be a small one, but you know what? I, that's not the end of the world. I think for uh, under £100, seven battalions of British infantry there is a phenomenal start. And that's all due to the Perry's deal and having the units of 24 figures now we've not only got the infantry elements of this we've also got that cannon as well so that gives us some artillery support and we've also got the three mounted colonels and what i'm going to suggest we do with those three mounted colonels is we have one of them as lieutenant colonel alexander wallace the commander of the first brigade campbell is the commander of the second brigade so he'll be the second model and we use the third one as we'll use him for now as Major General Edward Packenham, because he was actually in command at the Battle of Salamanca, because Picton was wounded at um, uh, Badajoz. So he was still recovering from that wound, and his deputy, Edward Packenham, took over. That said, Picton is cool, he wears his top hat, he's scruffy, I've got a lot of comment with him. Uh, so we almost certainly will be wanting to pick up Picton later, but for now... We've got our two brigades of British infantry and all the commanders that we need to go with them. As a quick aside, if you don't want to have all your battalions the same, you could spend a little bit more and go for BH-68 as infantry command marching. So you could go for those guys instead. It's going to cost you more. That'll take us over the £100 limit, but it'll just mix up the command groups a little bit. You could even mix them in, so you could have, for argument's sake, uh, two of the metal figures, four of the plastic ones, and then mix them around the different command groups there, just just to give a bit more variation. But for me, the plastics are good enough. I'm just going to uh, carry on this video as if we just bought the plastic ones. But just be aware that there are metal command groups that the Perrys do. Make sure you don't get a Waterloo campaign one, though. Now, one thing that I should have said when I was talking about the mounted colonels is, and this is a bit of a bugbear of mine here, because it's an indication of how good the Perrys are, but sometimes they they get away from themselves, shall we say. They, they overlook things. Because the infantry have got all the options for Peninsula or Waterloo, but the colonels don't. Now, one of the colonels is wearing a bonnet, so that's absolutely fine. The bonnets were worn like way past Napoleonic times, so that's, that, that's fine. No problem there. But the other two clearly have Belgic Shakos. Now, they should be wearing bicorns, really. Uh, but, you know, it's not the end of the world. You just you can cut the false front off if you want, and it'll kind of look like a, um, uh, a stovepipe Shako. So it's not necessarily the end of the world. Now, what you could do, however, is one of them's waving his Shako, not him, the other guy who's wearing it. You could... I'm not suggesting you do, but I'm just putting it out there. You could cut off his head now if you are going to cut off his head we'll come back to him next month don't worry uh he is he's, he's not finished we'll come back to him 
probably wouldn't cut off his head at the moment. Just use him as is, and we can come back to that later. Now, the artillery is also has the same problem as well. It's uh, Again, the crew are all wearing the Belgic Shakos. Now, it's not necessarily too much of a problem here, because you've got tons of spare stovepipe Shakos lying around from all your plastics, so you can quite easily decapitate the gun crew and pop some plastic stovepipe heads on them if you're that bothered ultimately as well you could just not even bother because probably no one's going to notice anyway but if that's the kind of thing that you know you you say i want to do a peninsular army i want it to be faithful to the peninsula then yep yeah, chop all their heads off and that sound, <laughs> sound a bit like the uh, the red queen in uh, alice in wonderland cut all their heads off and replace them with some plastics from you know your spare plastics from the the gazillions that you're going to have lying around so at the end of the first month we've got seven battalions oh well we've got six battalions of 24 british infantry and one battalion of 18 we've got some artillery support we've got one cannon we've got all the command elements and we've got three units of four riflemen and an extra spare four now keep those four to one side i said earlier on that you could make units of five ignore me ignore that Make them units of four, put those four to one side, we're going to get to those bad boys next month. Now one thing that I should say here, and we may address it later on, I'm not sure yet, is the problem of the 74th of foot. Now they were a Highlander regiment. Now I have heard two conflicting things here. I'm sure there are people out there who will know much better than I. But I have heard that they didn't actually wear kilts, that they wore trues. The kilts were withdrawn after 1809. They did, however, have the bonnets on. I was going to say war bonnets then. They're, <laughs> they're not Indians. I did hear that they wore bonnets as well. So we're going to need to get some bonnets from somewhere if that's going to be something that we care about. We could just use Highlander figures or we could just give them stovepipe shakos and paint them with plaid trousers. Now, there is evidence for them wearing uh, stovepipe shakos. The, uh, the bonnets you'll be shocked to hear, I'm sure, don't particularly last very long on campaign. And I am told that they replace them with Shakos fairly soon. But for me, part of Napoleonics is about the spectacle of it. So at the moment, that's just something to keep in the back of our mind. And we'll, we'll come to them in the next month. Now, another bonus that the Perrys have is that they come with bases. Now, they are scaled for a frontage of 50 millimeters, And I personally prefer 20. But they are absolutely fine. They're more than usable. General Andy, he used 15mm for all his frontages, and a lot of people prefer the look as well. It makes them a lot more packed together. It's particularly good for American Civil War, actually. So, that's fine. We can all use those bases, and again, there are spares, and we can use the spares for our brigade commanders. And we may need to glue two together to get everyone on, but we can also use them for the cannon as well. Additionally, they come with a sheet of flags. Now, there's only two battalions of uh, flags, or regiments worth of flags on there. And they are not a huge amount of use to us when we're collecting the 3rd Brigade, because they are the 33rd of foot, which is my dad's old regiment, so that's quite nice, and the 44th of foot, the East Essex Regiment. So, n neither of those are in our brigades, but, you know, you can use them for now if you want to. They are free. So, you know, you just loosely put them around the flags and then we can pop them off if we uh, if we get the real ones next month. So there we go. End of the first month. Pretty good start. Seven battalions of infantry, artillery and the commanders to go with them. I think that is a great start. So with the brown envelope with our wages in, clasped in our sweaty paws. That is literally how we used to get paid for anyone who was under 30. Then, <laughs> then we can uh, move ahead with the second month and the rest of the purchases for our British Peninsula Army. Having got all the red coats, we can see there is a third brigade there, and it's your boy, Manly Powers Portuguese Brigade. So, we're going to start off, we are going to jump over to the Warlord Games website. Now, I know I said that we suggest the Perrys, but they don't do Portuguese, I'm afraid. So, we're going to head over to Warlord Games, and we are going to buy the Portuguese line infantry regiment deal that's two boxes and that gives us 40 uh, sorry that's for 41 pounds now i'm going to say here this is i mean they call it a deal it I, i'm not entirely sure that you can get them for false advertising on this one 
But uh, that's a very generous description, shall we say. It's forty-one pounds, and I'm gonna. I'm, I'll be honest. You can actually get them cheaper by buying two boxes from a third-party company. So uh, the Outpost, as I mentioned, or if they don't do them, and they're 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 a bit mm, with their Warlord um, stock at the moment. Good for Perry's, eh, or not Perry's. Uh, you can either jump onto them, or you can jump to another Sheffield uh, Wargaming store, Wargames Emporium, and they they knock them out at seventeen pounds a box. So if you buy the two from Wargames Emporium, that makes them seven pounds cheaper than the Warlord Games deal. That's me making some uh, air quotes there. So it really does pay to shop around, but rules are rules. And we're going to have to go with a recommended retail price of £41. And with the £2 that we had left over from last month, that's going to give us £61 remaining. But please, 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 please do not buy that deal. Please get two boxes from a third party for much, much cheaper. So this makes up the vast majority of the 3rd Brigade, the 8th Portuguese Brigade, under, under your boy Sir Manly Power. Now, he, if we decided to cut his head off in the first month, or we're going to do it now, he can have one of the spare heads from the Portuguese infantry set, uh, glue him onto the, uh, the recently decapitated body, and MP, as we like to call him, uh, continues to wear his bike or Now, the chances are that he probably continued to wear his British uniform, so you can get away with it there as well. And the third unit that was in his brigade are the Cazadore. Now, we had four leftover riflemen from the first month, so we're going to paint those bad boys brown, and mwah, that's me doing a chef's kiss. We've got the Cazadores. Now, the Cazadores were actually a full battalion, but, I mean, that, we don't want to go too far down that road, so the the, the tiny rifleman unit, that's going to give us this suggestion, shall we say, of the, uh, the Cazadore. Additionally, these Portuguese regiments, they come with flags in the boxes. Now, they are specific to certain regiments. I can't remember which one those regiments are. But that said, I mean, there's so much frill and, and stuff on those Portuguese flags. And the changes are so minute, no one's ever going to be able to notice. So those flags, more than good enough. And we're also going to have probably enough spare bases from all the Perry sets to sort those guys out as well. So, you know, we we can, we can, uh, they may even come in boxes, uh, bases in the box, to be honest. I'm not entirely sure. It's been quite a long time since I bought any Portuguese. But anyway, with those two Warlord boxes and the Cazadores, we've got the third brigade. We've got the Portuguese brigade with manly power, with a new head. We're all good to go. Now, with the remaining £61, we can either look at replacing the 74th with more suitable Highlander figures, or... We could not do that, and we can buy some cool stuff instead, and that is cavalry. Now, I am going to suggest that we go with cavalry, because it's it's more fun. We, we've got the infantry anyway. We can replace them in the future. I don't think it's essential when we're starting out that we get the exact right units. So I'm going to recommend that we get some cavalry. And there are a ton of Perry cavalry options to choose from. You've got hussars. You've got uh, dragoons. You've got KGL hussars. You can have British Heavy Cavalry from Warlord. There's a ton of options. But as Conor McLeod would exclaim loudly, there can be only one. And for me, the only one is the sweet, sweet Tarleton action that you get from the Perry Light Dragoons for 20 quid. Now, this fits in with the Peninsula War for me because, you know, when I think of Peninsula War, I think of Light Dragoons for the british anyway so i think of regular dragoons for the french so I, I i think that's quite thematic as well now you get 14 of those bad boys in the box so i'm going to suggest that we also pick up b43 napoleonic british light dragoon command now that's a second command sprue from the box there's two minis on that sprue and the horses are, are included on that sprue as well so that gives us 16 cavalrymen with two com full command groups allowing us two units of eight. Awesome. I think that's really good. That's an extra £4 for that sprue, and it takes us to an overall spend this month of £63, and that leaves us with £37 left over. Now, these horsey boys are going to need a commander, and we're going to stay with the Perrys, and we're going to buy BH2, 
which is a senior command, and that gives us Wellington, Uxbridge, and Picton. Now, Picton, of course, is our divisional commander. So, good old Pakenham, he can be demoted to uh, General Campbell, and Picton can swap in for him there. The Uxbridge, um, the Earl of Uxbridge, we can use him to lead our Light Dragoons. And the Duke of Boots is, well, he's, he's the Duke of Boots, is he? You can't have a Peninsula War army without Old Nosey. So, uh, that's great as well. Now, this leaves us with £28 to spend. And we're going to get to some, some less sexy stuff as well. We're going to need some more bases. Now, we've got enough for the infantry. But uh, we're going to need some for the cavalry. Now, the cavalry are Perry, so they come with bases in the box. There's a couple of spares, so the extra command group that we got, the extra two figures, there's going to be enough for them. That's absolutely fine. So this is absolutely a discretionary purchase. You can use uh, other spare bases on your commanders, that's fine. But I like to have my commanders on round bases. So I'm going to head over to war bases and pack up, pick up sorry, a pack of 50mm round bases for our commanders. And 20 millimeter round bases for our skirmisher riflemen. One pack of each should be enough. And at 175 for each of those two packs, that's another three pound fifty, which takes us to a total of 75 pounds 50p, and it leaves us just a touch under 25 pounds left. Now this is often the stage of the video where it really does go to you know what would you like to spend your final 20 25 pounds on. So these are just some options for me. I'm going to recommend that we buy another cannon model, also from the Perrys, and this will allow us to turn our one model battery into a two model battery. Now, personally, I like to have a howitzer model in there for variety. Uh, batteries often had six cannons, two howitzers would be a fairly standard get-up for those. So I'm going to recommend BH-139, that's a howitzer. Now, make sure that you get the higher numbered ones, because they are the Prince of War ones, the lowered numbered stuff. That's the 100 days. Again, it's not necessarily the end of the world. You can always do a head swap if you want. If you see like an 1815 one cheap on eBay or something like that, just, just buy it. Do the head swap if you want. Don't. Either way, it doesn't really matter. I don't think anyone's going to particularly notice. But uh, if you're buying one with you know free choice, you can buy it. Any one you want. You may as well buy one that's, that's true to the period. Now, if you're happy though. Now, here is a... Uh, uh, a slight aside from this if you're happy with a one gun battery if you don't feel the need for a second gun i like to have two guns but it's certainly not essential then you could pick up bh46 and give your light dragoon brigade a bit of fire support because that one gives you a royal horse artillery pack now having just said avoid the low, <laughs> low numbered codes this is quite a low numbered code but it's okay because the light dragoons wore the tarlatans throughout the period from the Peninsula War and Waterloo as well. So that one doesn't matter. Uh, as I say, I prefer the two-gun batteries, but as we're starting out, I probably would go for the Royal Horse Artillery gun, and you can always add the, the second guns to those batteries a bit later, maybe even a Royal Horse Artillery limber. The Perrys do a really, really nice one of those. Um, you can maybe add those later, and you know, there's, it's not essential for a first purchase. So uh, that would be an extra £9.50, which is going to take us to £85 on the nose, which leaves us with a nice round £15 to spend. So we can do a number of different things with our final £15. We can look at replacing the head of the 74th of foot and give them bonnets instead of shakos. Now, because no one sells Napoleonic heads separately yet, I, I just it, it maintains a source of frustration for me. Uh, but anyway, uh, we're going to need to buy a sprue of the Victrix Highlanders. Now, here's a bit of a conundrum for you. In order to buy the sprue with the heads on, they also come with the bodies and the arms as well. So at that point, I've got to ask myself, why not just add an 8th Infantry Battalion and have the 8th Infantry Battalion in kilts? If I'm honest, if you're paying for the bodies and the arms en anyway, y you may as well use them. But I mean, that, that's just me. Um, I think that they look awesome. I think they add a little bit of variety to the tabletop as well. But uh, but there you go. Now, you could spend £25 on a box of 60 of these guys, but we only need 24, so that seems a little bit of a waste, although in fairness, you would get the flags in the box of Highlands, or you used to. I don't know if you still do, actually, but you certainly used to. 
Uh, now, I've seen a guy on eBay. His name is Slogger777. I have absolutely no affiliations with this guy whatsoever, but I just saw him on eBay. I've never bought from him, so I can't attest as to like, how, um, yeah, how good he is or anything like that. But I do know that he sells a sprue for uh, £5.40. Now, we'll need two of these bad boys, so that's £10.80 on two sprues of Victrix Highlanders. And that will give us, I believe, 30 figures. So we've even got some spares as well. And we can pop those either on the some of the individual circle bases. We can make battalion skirmishes out of them. Or you can also use them to decorate the bases of your commanders as well. Maybe have them marching past or something like that. Marching past the commander, I should say. Now, because Victrix separate their center and flank companies, make sure you buy one of each to make sure you've got enough guys with the nests to make the flank company. That said, if you can't get the flank company guys, when I saw he only had the uh, the center companies, I mean, it's not the end of the world. You can either green stuff the nests on or, uh, or just, just don't worry about them. I'm, I'm sure no one's really going to notice. It's not necessarily the end of the world. But if you want to be historically accurate, then you need to throw the bodies away and just use the heads. Glue them on the uh, Perry infantry. They've got the same connection head to body as each other so it's it's an easy swap just glue them on and jobs are good and odd. one slight thing i would say is they're gonna have absolutely ginormous heads because the victory heads are quite big and the perries are actually quite slender but <laughs> but i mean that's absolutely fine you can probably get away with it because they're gonna have the bonnets on and it's just gonna look a little bit funny so that's that's all right what you could do as well is if you uh, if you paint up the full battalion in the kilts you can bump 12 of the figures from the battalion that you were using as a 74. Bung those boys into the 18-man battalion. Sorry, you only need six, won't you? Bung six of those guys in there, and then you've got yourself that as a full battalion as well. But alternatively, and this would be my absolute maximum choice. This would be the one that, gun to my head, I would absolutely go for. And that is, we could buy us some flags. One of the best things about the British... On the Napoleonic tabletop. Well, there's two things I always say. Well, three things, actually. The first one is the diversity of uniforms. You've got Portuguese, Spanish, British, Brunswickers, uh, KGL. They're the same as everyone else. But, uh, you know, you've got all this this great um, mix. De Vauteville, Swiss. There's tons of them. So that's really cool. The second thing is the red. Uh, the white on red, I should say. Always looks a really striking color scheme. That looks great. And the third one, and the most important one, is two flags per battalion always look awesome. That's why the Russians look so cool. That's why my Austrians have two flags. Oh, they maybe didn't historically, don't care. My Bavarians, they've got two flags. Two flags in a battalion always looks sweet. And if we're going for this army, I would recommend that we go large on the flags. Now, we've talked a lot about the 3rd Division. And the two flags that we get in the Perry boxes are not enough for... Uh, well, I mean, it's not enough for a star. I mean, we can't have everyone as the same regiment. And they're, they're not right for the 3rd Division anyway. So we're going to jump over to Victrix. Now, they do four different sheets of A4 flags for the British. They do two for Waterloo, two for the Peninsula. Now, actually, here's, this is a bit of a secret tip. I think that the Victrix flags are a bit of a head, hidden gem, actually. So I would recommend that you check them out. I would recommend that you buy all of them, to, if I'm honest. But... The, uh, the Italian uh, set they do, mm, absolutely amazing. When I start on my Italians, and they may be in the not-too-distant future, I'll definitely be getting them from there. When they bring out their Bavarians, whenever that's going to be, uh, I'll certainly be buying some Bavarian flags for them as well. Anyway, 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 that's, um, that's, that's going ahead. Now, luckily, one of the sheets, uh, I think it is sheet one. Yes, it is sheet one. I've just had a quick look. Uh, sheet one of the Peninsula flags is almost exactly what we want for the third division. It's like they had me in mind when they made it. Now, just be careful with this one, because at least on my browser anyway, sheet one was after sheet two. It was like to the right of sheet two, so that was a bit weird. So make sure you get the right one, though. Uh, now, it's got the flags. Now, we're talking about the British, so I should stop calling them flags. I should call them colours because that's what the British call them. And they have on that sheet the colours for the, big breath, the 5th, the 74th, the 88th, the 83rd, the 45th, and the 4th. Now, the 45th, the 74th, and the 88th 
were the 1st Brigade of the 3rd Division. So that's a bingo. We've got all of those. And the 2nd Division was 2 Battalions of the 5th and 1 of the 83rd. Now, we've got the 83rd on that sheet. We've also got one set for the 5th. Now, the 2nd Battalion of the 5th Infantry can be given, shall we suggest, a... Um, a a facsimile, I think, would be a fair term. A reproduction, one could say, of that sheet. Uh, or, or we also have on that sheet the 4th, the Mighty King O's, my old regiment. So we could upgrade the 5th to the 4th, because it's definitely an upgrade, and we could make them the King O's. Again, that wouldn't necessarily be historically accurate, because the Kings, I believe, were in the 1st Division. Uh, possibly the 4th Division, I'm not sure. But they certainly weren't in the 3rd. But that said, if you're not that bothered then it, seemed, it would be silly just to throw those flags away or just not use them when you've got a battalion that needs a set of flags. So, you know, that's up to you. I'm not going to suggest that you photocopy the um, the victory sheet, but were that to accidentally happen, then that would give you a second set of colours for the 5th Regiment. Or failing that, you could jump over to uh, GMB Design. We've got £5 left over. That sheet was £10. And we could use some of that final £5 to grab a second lot of colours for the 5th Battalion, uh, the 5th Regiment. Now finally, I'm going to give you a third option for your final £15. And this is without a doubt my absolute favourite choice. This is the one that I, I want to say you should absolutely go for. But realistically, I'd get the flags first. This is going to be one of those, those third month purchases when you just want something a bit fun. And the Perrys have recently released a set of vignettes for the Peninsula War. So there's some really nice ones. Uh, you can check out my video on vignettes. Uh, I'll try and put a link in the description if I remember, which I, I very rarely do. <laughs> but uh, if I do, then uh, you will you can see that there's a camp scene. That's really nice. That, that's got uh, Picton, the Duke, Stapleton, Cotton, etc. They're all gathered around like a map table. You could go for the Portuguese Telegraph Station. I've got one of those. Or you could go for a dentist pulling some teeth. I mean, after all, you just painted 144 infantrymen. Uh, plus two battalions of Portuguese, plus loads of riflemen, plus the cavalry, plus two cannons. What, I mean, what's the point in doing all that if you can't paint something fun of a guy having his tooth ripped out or <laughs> something like that? So that's it. That is £200 spent on our Peninsula War British Army. Now, £200 at Games Workshop does not get you a huge amount these days. That would get you, I'm just calculating it now, 60 Imperial Guard infantry. Now, my Imperial Guard army contains over 130 infantrymen. So it gets you less than half of a way to an infantry army for the Imperial Guard. What does it get you for black powder? Well, it gets you a fantastic army. It gets you either six or seven battalions of British line infantry. Uh, they, you know, if we added the Highlanders or not. So let's say seven, seven battalions of British infantry, one maybe a little bit smaller, and you've got three companies of the Royal American Rangers or Royal American Rifles to support them, along with some artillery with a cannon. You've got some spare figures, if you included the Highlanders, that you can make uh, skirmish companies from those as well. But you've additionally got a brigade of two full battalions of Portuguese infantry, taking us to nine infantry battalions, and we've got some skirmishes to support them as well. Some Cazadores, 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 however they're pronounced. We've got some of those bad boys as well. You could also pick up the War Games Atlantic Rifleman box. I did a, a review on them, and I painted a little, yeah, I painted one up as a as a Cazador for that one, Cazadores, whatever. I painted one up as that. So check that video out if you uh, if you want to see some more riflemen on there. Uh, so anyway, so we've got those. We've got the uh, the nine infantry units with skirmishers. We've got a brigade of two regiments of light dragoons with a royal artillery, ho royal horse artillery cannon to support them. We've got the senior commanders. We've got our divisional commander Picton. We've got the Duke of Wellington himself, and we've got one of the brigade commanders for each of our brigades as well. One of whom we've done a sweet conversion. And he's now wearing his Portuguese Shaco. I think it's a Berettina, I think they call it. Um, or maybe even a bicorn. You can get a spare bicorn from somewhere. I think you get a bear head in the uh, the Portuguese. So you could give one of the standard bearers a bear head like his hat's been blown off. And then use that bicorn 
instead of the head to uh, to go for Sir Manly Power. In fact, that's that's probably what I'll do. I'm burbling now, though. I'm just I'm thinking of this stuff off the fly. This is why I write scripts. So, um, what else have we got? So yes, yeah, so we've got the entire third division from the Battle of Salamanca here, and there is pl plus the cavalry. And there is still plenty of room for expansion if we want to. Now, I should quickly say before I go, this video is ooh, it's running quite long, this one. I should say before we go that this um, how to buy also works entirely for Waterloo as well. Because the Perrys do their dual sets, then it's perfect for Waterloo. The only thing I would change is I would swap out the Portuguese brigade for a Hanoverian one, probably. You could also just get some more British infantry if you wanted. Maybe paint them as KGL, something like that. So I'd swap them out for the Hanoverians, still on the Warlord website. And that's it, really. Jobs are good. And you could change the Light Dragoons to perhaps Hussars, something like that, for something a bit more waterloo -y. But there were plenty of Light Dragoons at um, at Waterloo. But they wore boring Shakos. Uh, who who would want Shakos when there's some sweet-ass Tarletons lying around? That would be my question. Although, that said, you could save the Tarletons for, uh, for a... Uh, a Maxi Minis video I'm going to do later. But there we go. That's it. That is how to collect a British army for the peninsula. It's the entire 3rd Division under Sir Thomas Picton or Sir Edward Pakenham, whichever way you can do it. But it's the entire 3rd Division under Sir Thomas Picton for £198. I think that is a phenomenal deal. I think that's really good. It's going to give you a strong army on the tabletop. The British are, are one of the best armies out there. And you, you're just going to have a great time with them. Thank you so much for listening. I'm really enjoying being back after my break. It's great to see you all again. And I hope to see you in the next one.